Norse mythology, there was a time that was called the Golden Age, where peace and wisdom ruled the land. It was a time that's known as Frodra Fridre. In this Golden Age, everyone could seek wisdom and divine knowledge. Vision was broad and peace was imminent. It was the time of Balder, the Shining Lord, who lives in Bredra Blik, which means the broad vision. The polarity of the time of Balder is the time of Hödr. He is called the Blind God of War and will arrive at the ending of the Golden Age, slowly but surely replacing the time of Balder and then starts the process of Ragnarök, which is called the Twilight of the Gods. It was also the time when Kvasir, the personification of infinite wisdom and knowledge created by the gods, moved freely through the worlds. The sagas talked about a war between the gods, the Veneers and the Aesirs. Let's just mention something about these two groups of gods before we talk more about the Golden Age and the Mead of Poetry. In Norse mythology, the Veneer gods are believed to be the oldest gods in Scandinavia and originally being pre-Indo-European deities or Indo-European fertility gods. Among the Vanir gods are Njord, who rules the waves and the winds, and his children are Frey, who is called the Lord, who rules fertility and growth, and his twin sister Freya, the lady, who has many names, but also is called the great ocean that thirsts and nourishes the world tree. This ocean is called Mardalr. Their mother is the unknown sister wife Njörun, who is considered to be an earth mother. There is also Heimdall and Ulr. They're also theorized to be members of the oldest gods, the Veneers. Heimdall was born of nine mothers, yet the Mör, or sisters, depicted as waves of the ocean. He is also called the god of pure fire, the Narena Eldenskjöld. Heimdall, the one who shines over the world, is a sky god as well as a sun god. He was disguised as Rik in the poem Rikstula, teaching the noble caste the runes. He was also called the progenitors of the Norse caste, Stamfader. The Asirs are the gods of the pantheon that includes Odin, Frigg, Thor, Balder and Tyr. Masculine form for the Asirs is As, and the feminine form is Asunya. The Asir stems from Proto-Germanic, Ansus, which comes also from Proto-Indo-European, Hensus, which means life force, or the Sanskrit Asu, which also means life force. The Asirs were bestowed with intelligence and vitality, and the Veneer gods represented the natural forces like health, fertility and wisdom. So there was a war between the Norse pantheon of the gods, the Asirs and the Veneers, Guda Etna. It was a war between the conscious mind and the laws of nature, one could say. But what brought on this war that eventually led to peace and the golden age? Let's see, let's talk about that. There was a vulva called Gulveig, a giant from primordial time, Urtid. Gulveig 
meaning guldvägen, the golden way. She was speared by the Aesir and burned three times, and yet thrice reborn? Upon her rebirth, the vulva name was changed to Heidre, meaning the bright and the clear one. This vulva is Valfreya, the chaser of the slain, the leader of the Valkyries, a vanities as old as the universe itself, the Lady Freya. Speculations has been made if the death and rebirth and resurrection of the vulva and the jealousy to conquer the gold from the veneer provoked the Asir veneer war. The Vala speaks about this in Valans Bodum, and she said, I remember giants born before time those who in olden days had me fostered. Nine worlds, I remember, before the present world tree sprang from the crown. I remember when Gulveg was killed with a spear in the most high hall. They burned her. Three times they burned, three times born, and yet she still lives. She was called Bright One, the clairvoyant vulva. She could send spells and she could perform sait wherever she could. Ecstatic was her very soul. She was adored by wicked women. And the ruling forces went into their assembly seats, the high and holy gods to hold their parliaments, with the question, should the seer carry a sacrifice or pay the fine for the harm done towards the enemy, the veneers? Odin then threw his sword. Broken were the walls of the seer stronghold, and victorious the veneer gods were crossing the field. Now let's look a little bit closer at this golden age, the time of Balder. The myth tells us that there were gold in the land. A golden ring lay on the sacred landscape for all to see, and no one stole it. It was also a time when Kvasir, the personification of infinite wisdom and knowledge created by the gods, He moved freely through the worlds. It was a time of peace. When the walls of Asgard was ruptured, Gudaetna, the pantheon of the gods, they declared peace with one another. It was a glorious time. And the high priestess Lady Freya, she was appointed to be the Blut Gudja in the high hall. She then instructed the gods to pour their divine essence into a cauldron in Chittel. And the pantheon of the gods, they spat, also spottade. They collected their saliva in this cauldron and filled it with the power of divine union and with all their knowledge. This became the sacred Medo memory the mead of poetry and immortality. And from their spit, they created a man named Kvasir, who was considered to be the wisest among them all, so wise that there were no questions that he could not answer. Kvasir, he traveled in the world of peace, spreading noble knowledge and wisdom to mankind, until the dwarves, Fjallar and Galar, Fjallar means the deceiver and Galar means the screamer, they killed Kvasir and drained him of his blood. They mixed his blood with honey 
This is the poetic mead, and I drank from the vessel Odrerir. This is the mead of poetry, and also known as the mead of Sottingre. This mead imbues Bechelar, the drinker with skald and wisdom, and bestows on him immortality. And skald means one who speaks like a poet. So the dwarves killed this divine wisdom and poured its essence back into the cauldron and they guarded it jealously. But the giant Suttinger, he saw this. He avenged the wars because they had taken the meat and they had killed his father, Gilling. And the dwarves implored the giant and, and offered him the mead in compensation for his father's death. But the giant rather decided to put the mead in a place called Hintbjörk, where his daughter Gunn Löd was in charge of guarding it. So what happened to this very attractive mead and wisdom? Everybody wanted this mead, right? Well, Odin, he also knew the value of the meat of poetry. So he was bound to go and get that meat, whatever it cost. He disguised his, himself as Bölverk, and he met the giant Suttinger's brother, Baugi. He was guarding the meat, and Odin then proposed to him that he could work in replacement of the nine useless slaves that he had. And in exchange, he would get a sip of the Suttinger mead. And Baugi, the brother of the giant, he said that was okay. And Odin then gave him a drill and asked him, would you drill me a hole in the mountain Hintberg? And the giant did. Then quickly, Odin took the shape of a snake and he managed to get into the underworld where the mead was and where Gunnlöd was guarding that mead. Odin then made a deal with Gunnlöd. Well, before he did that, he seduced her and he said, for every night I spend here, would you give me a big sip of this precious meat? And she agreed. So Odin spent three nights with Gunnlöd, and she was heartbroken when Odin left. But Odin had one thing in mind, and that was to get out of the underworld as quickly as possible. He was taking the meat back to Asgård for the other gods to get drunk on poetry. Odin then transformed himself to an eagle and flew back to Asgård. When the Aesir saw Odin came, they set out vessels or cauldrons in readiness to hold the meat. But the giant Suttinger, he saw Odin fly away as an eagle, so he also transformed himself as an eagle. And Odin looked back and he saw that the giant was behind him as an eagle. And in fear and haste, he let some of that precious liquid, the meat of poetry, which was all inside of him now, he let it out from his anus. So this spoiled mead that out of Odin's behind it's called Skaldifra and it came upon the grounds and the ordinary people but it didn't have as much of an effect as the greater portion of the mead or poetry which came from the eagle's beak from Odin's mouth or beak and Odin gave it to the gods and they were truly gifted in poetry. There is a poem from the Havamal 
It goes like this. Gunnlöd gave me, on the golden throne, a drink of the dear one mead. In return, I gave her bad recompense for her whole heart, for her sorrowful soul. So these are the words of Odin. He was mainly interested in the mead of poetry. So in exchange for the mead, the Jötun Gunnlöd spent three nights with Odin, but she had to stay in the underworld. But she bore him a son, Bragi, and he knows Skaldr, he's a poet, and he knows the runes, we know that. And when Bragi came of age, he could leave the mountain and join his father Odin, and he did. So for those who forever after wish to find this divine wisdom, will have to seek it when fearless facing death. The warrior will then be offered the meat of wisdom from the Valkyrie in the underworld. And the precious meat was forever brought into the underworld, hidden from humanity. So Odin, who cunningly figured out how to get the whole of the mead protected by the giants, he left the lady of fate heartbroken, but yet not understanding that she was and is the mead of wisdom.